So lecture five is all about foodborne disease, slightly different from uh, food poisoning. So the aim of this unit is to provide an understanding of the causes of foodborne diseases and to outline the characteristics of common foodborne disease causing organisms. And the learning outcomes, by the end of this unit, you will be able to identify how many organisms are required to cause a problem, state why multiplication of food is not essential, and identify which bacteria is the most common cause of diarrhoea in the UK. And finally, know which bacteria will multiply significantly in a refrigerator. So, foodborne diseases enter our system via the faecal oral route. Uh, this is really where uh, faeces come into contact with our mouth from outside sources. So, it could be, uh, like you see on the graphic, where sewage... Uh, has gone directly into water supply, which it does throughout the UK on a regular basis, especially when there's uh, stormy weather or floods. The raw sewage goes into rivers, into estuaries and the sea. And obviously if this comes in contact with your mouth, then you will get a foodborne disease. Uh, examples include Compylobacter enteritis. Uh, enteritis means inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. But Compylobacter is the biggest cause of diarrhoea in the UK. Um, we get a lot of that on chickens, raw chickens. Um, even on the outside packaging, it's not just on the inside of the chicken, uh, in the cavity on the skin, but on, also on the outside of the packaging. So you've got to be careful when you're buying chickens. Uh, use specific bags to put those wrapped chickens into. Don't mix it with other things like fruit, for example where it could contaminate the skin, you eat the skin and you could have food poisoning, or rather the foodborne disease. Um, Escherichia coli 0157. This is a common serotype of E. coli in cow's manure, uh, which it has been uh, since the early 80s when it was discovered. A norovirus, uh, the winter vomiting bug. Listeria, typhoid and paratyphoid. Hepatitis A, bacillary dysentery, brucellosis, tuberculosis, and parasites. So let's have a look at Compylobacter enteritis. Uh, the incubation period is 1 to 11 days, usually 2 to 5 days. So you can see for a start uh, how different this is from food poisoning because the incubation period tends to be longer. Uh, duration of the illness, usually one to seven days, so that's quite similar to food poisoning. Symptoms, colicky abdominal pain, diarrhea, often blood stain. Vomiting is rare. You sometimes get fever, headaches and nausea. So again, it's mainly affecting the lower part of the body rather than the upper part. It's the most common cause of diarrhea in the UK, probably the world today. Compylobacter jejuni. Uh, accounts for 90% and Compylobacter coli, coli sorry, um, accounts for 10% and the growth range is 28 degrees C to 46 degrees C. Uh, just to go back to the uh, top of this slide, Compylobacter enteritis, uh, enteritis is not a particular serotype. As I mentioned that really means uh, inflammation of the gastrointestinal tract. The main uh, serotypes are the ones shown there, jejuni and coli. It's gram-negative, it's a curved rod, and it's a microaerophile, which means it requires uh, oxygen, but in small amounts, roughly about 5%. Sources of Compylobacter, animals and birds, including infected cats and dogs, are the main source of organisms. Cross-contamination can come from raw poultry. Uh, again, cross-contamination is probably the biggest cause of food poisoning in Compylobacter, not so much the undercooking of the poultry. Uh, people handle uh, the poultry packaging, as I mentioned, plus the poultry. Then, without thinking, without washing their hands, they are touching uh, food surfaces, they are touching uh, what we call fomites, uh, touching other things before washing their hands, uh, perhaps touching high-risk foods. Again, there's the cross-contamination. 
Uh, magpies pecking milk from bottles used to be quite common when we had milk bottles, but we tend to buy our milk in cartons these days. Although I do believe there are some milk rounds where they do deliver bottles. So if you see a pecked milk bottle top, uh, don't use it because it's likely to be infected by Campylobacter. Raw milk, untreated natural water. So any waters from streams, rivers, brooks, etc. Always make sure you don't drink it as is. Even if it looks quite clean, it is likely to be infected with Campylobacter and other uh, microorganisms and parasites. Common food vehicles, raw undercooked poultry and meat, raw milk and contaminated water. Control factors, better hygiene in slaughterhouses, heat treatment of milk, thorough cooking, better hygiene awareness of consumers. Again, that's, that's a good point. You probably, if you ask the any person on the street, um, can you tell me what Campylobacter is? And they probably look at you uh, with a blank look. They've never heard of this before. It has been on the news um, quite recently. Uh, but it's just one of those things that people are not aware of. Pet hygiene, good pet hygiene, and reduce cross-contamination from farm to table, and chlorination of water. E. coli 0157, this is a particular serotype that does cause serious problems and uh, up to serious illness and death. The incubation period, one to eight days, usually three to four days. Symptoms include, well, it varies from watery diarrhea, nausea, abdominal pain, to bright red bloody diarrhea and severe abdominal cramps. Causes serious illness in old and young. Often fatal, serious cases shorten life expectancy due to organ damage. Uh, up to 30% uh, of the uh, people that come down with E. coli 0157, uh, it causes HUS, which is hemolytic uremic syndrome. And this is all to do with the kidneys. It actually breaks down the kidneys. Uh, it's a major cause of acute renal failure in children. The growth range is 3 degrees C to 46 degrees C, although the optimum is 37 degrees C. Um, studies have shown that it will grow quite happily at 4 degrees C in a fridge. Um, so this is why we need to get our fridge temperatures down to below 3 degrees C if possible, uh, without sort of uh, freezing uh, any things like salad items. Now E. coli, uh, the main E. coli bag is present in the human intestines, in the, uh, the colon or the bowel. Uh, actually, it's, it's what we class as good bacteria. It has a symbiotic relationship with us. Uh, it actually produces vitamin K from uh, the, the food waste that goes into the colon from the small intestine. Uh, so it's, it's, it's friendly where it is, but when it comes out in its feces, it can mutate into one of these variants, um, especially this one, the 0157. It's gram-negative, it's rod, as uh, rod shaped rather, and it is acid tolerant. Sources of E. coli uh, 0157 include the intestines of animals, including cattle and sheep, intestines of people, person to person uh, contamination is quite uh, common, water, uh, drinking water, and bathing water, uh, and other common sources also. Common food vehicles, contaminated cooked meat, undercooked mints or burgers. Uh, again, um, I was on a holiday recently in the USA and when you ask for a burger, they ask how you want it cooked, so you can't have it undercooked, uh, which I don't recommend because most minced beef, if not all minced beef, will contain E. coli 0157. So you need to cook your burgers to at least 63 degrees C, uh, preferably up to 75 as per the Food Standards Agency. Raw milk, cheese made from unpasteurized milk, apple juice and salad vegetables. Control factors uh, prevent cross-contamination, thorough cooking especially of mince and burgers, washing of salad vegetables and fruit, 
high standards of personal hygiene, including very uh, rigorous hand washing regimes, strict segregation of raw and high risk foods. Other control fa uh, factors avoid untreated milk and apple juice, training of food handlers, increased consumer awareness, use of effective hazard analysis or HACCP, hazard analysis critical control points. Remember that food safety management system, which we'll go into in a later lecture. Norovirus, let's have a look at that one. Uh, it's smaller than bacteria, uh, up to 10 times, 100 times smaller. They multiply in living cells, not food. There are millions in vomit. Uh, airborne person to person is quite common. There are also millions in sneezes and coughs if that person has the norovirus virus. Uh, low doses are required, uh, single amounts for example rather than hundreds of thousands or millions. The incubation period is 10 to 50 hours. Diarrhea and vomiting is very common uh, as you see on the graph here's projectiles is very um, it comes out quite quickly. Um, you'll get a lot of abdominal pain Short duration of the illness, only 12 to 60 hours. Uh, if you think back to most food poisoning bacteria, it's one to seven days. Uh, a rotavirus is another type of uh, a virus which also has similar effects. Uh, let's have a look at Listeria. Uh, Listeria monocytogenes uh, gives rise to Listeriosis. The incubation period is one day to three months. So quite a long period of time. Duration of the illness, 48 to 72 hours. Symptoms include flu-like illness and general malaise, diarrhea and mild fever, septicemia and meningitis, especially in vulnerable groups, and abortion is possible if a mother is infected, pregnant mother infected. It's a psychotrophic bacillus. Uh, in other words, it likes low temperatures. The growth range is minus 1.5 to 42 degrees C. So you can see there's quite a range uh, of temperatures there for this uh, bacteria or these bacteria to multiply. It's gram positive. It's a coccobacilli. So it uh, is globular shaped and it's acid and salt and cold tolerant. Sources include intestines of people and animals effluent and sewage sludge. There are many cases of cross-infection. It's a common environmental organism. Specific foods include soft cheeses and pâtés, especially cheeses and pâtés that have uh, not been pasteurised, and manure-contaminated vegetables. Control factors, efficient sewage disposal, avoidance of cross-contamination, Susceptible groups to avoid soft cheese and pate and contact with farm animals. Again, if you're petting farm animals, always make sure you wash your hands after petting them, especially with uh, young children and elderly, because uh, if they put their hands in their mouth or touch themselves um, in any way or form, they could cross-contaminate. Uh, care with shelf life of chilled foods, thorough cooking, effective cleaning and disinfection. Uh, dry cleaning is preferred. Typhoid and paratyphoid, uh, together known as enteric fever. Incubation period, three days to one month, uh, typically eight to 14 days. The duration, one to eight weeks. Symptoms, fever, malaise, slow pulse, enlarged spleen, rose spots on trunk, constipation or severe diarrhea. Uh, typhoid, uh, the variant there is called Salmonella typhi. Uh, fatality rate is between 2 and 10%. Up to 5% become permanent carriers. And paratyphoid, uh, the other variant, is Salmonella paratyphi. So enteric fever, the sources include feces and urine, especially in sewage contaminated water and food, and other carriers. Control factors, safe water supplies, 
satisfactory disposal of sewage, heat treatment of milk, control over contaminated shellfish. So again, as I mentioned this earlier, using approved suppliers, reputable suppliers, and knowing the provenance of your shellfish, where they come from. They've got to come from clean waters, not waters that are contaminated with uh, sewage uh, from um, uh, either industry or from the public. And exclusion of carriers in the workplace. High standards of personal hygiene, especially uh, rigorous hand washing regimes. And use of effective hazard, hazard analysis, critical control points, uh, which I've already mentioned and will cover in more detail later on. Hepatitis A. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, there are about seven different types of hepatitis, but A is the one that's contracted mainly from food. The incubation period uh, is 15 to 50 days, so quite a long period of time. Symptoms, abrupt onset, so it happens quite quickly uh, once the incubation period is, is over. You'll get a fever, you get malaise, nausea, abdominal pain, and later jaundice. Um, so which means that uh, it does start to affect the liver. Uh, so hepatic obviously comes from uh, the Greek word uh, meaning liver. So this is what it affects. Um, it's a virus and there are two types. Uh, type A uh, you'll find in food, as I mentioned, and B to G you'll find from blood contamination. The duration is from one week to several months, um, which wasn't mentioned above. Uh, the fatality rate is less than 1%. Sources of hepatitis A, carriers, uh, in their feces and urine, contaminated food, especially shellfish, milk, salad vegetables and soft fruit, and contaminated water. Control factors, we need to have safe water supplies, satisfactory disposal of sewage, heat treatment of milk, exclusion of carriers, high standards of personal hygiene, especially hand washing, avoid suspect shellfish, Use approved suppliers, reputable suppliers. Careful washing of salad vegetables and soft fruit. And dysentery. Uh, this is normally caused by Shigella sonae and Shigella flexneri. The incubation period here is one to seven days, usually four days. The duration of the illness is two to 16 days. Symptoms include... Uh, well, it's an acute disease, so it happens quickly after the incubation period. Uh, diarrhea, often containing blood, mucus and pus. Fever, stomach cramps, often vomiting. The death rate is less than 1%. Shigella flexneri is more, is more likely to be fatal than Shigella sonei. Sources include infected people, usually children. Contaminated food and water. Control factors, good personal hygiene, especially attention to washing hands effectively after using the toilet and cleaning toilet areas. General cleaning and disinfection and exclusion of carriers from the workplace. Chlorination of water supplies is another control factor as is effective disposal of sewage. Also eat treatment of milk and avoid shellfish from suspect waters. Use approved, reputable suppliers. Brusa, brucellosis uh, is known as undulant fever. Uh, you've got the two uh, serotypes that causes a problem, Brucella abortus and Brucella melatensis. The incubation period is five to 21 days. The symptoms include intermittent fever and flu-like symptoms, Extended depression and headache. Another one then is tuberculosis or TB caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium bovis. Uh, the incubation period there is four to six weeks. Later stages may take years. Symptoms, it affects the lungs, bones, lymph nodes, kidneys, intestines and skin. Brucellosis and TB sources include infected animal, usually a cow, raw milk, dairy products, person-to-person, -person, 
uh, which will bring on TB. Control factors, eradication scheme in the 60s and 70s and heat treatment have reduced this problem greatly. But still try to avoid raw milk and products made from raw milk. Other diseases, uh, BSE uh, does cause problems and has caused problems in the past with food. Uh, bovine spongiform encep encephalopathy, that's easy for me to say, uh, affects the brain. Uh, it's called bad cow disease. Um, it occurs uh, due to uh, what we call a prion or a protein ion uh, that's present um, in animals and um, comes into the food chain and affects us. Um, it affects us uh, by causing CJD. Uh, this is Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. It's the human equivalent of BSE. And it's all down to these two diseases, really, from um, using animals in the food chain. Uh, there was a case going back in the 80s uh, where uh, scrapey infected sheep uh, were fed to other animals. Now, scrapey is a, a, a protein ion, and this then, when it came into contact with the cattle, caused BSE. Uh, Giardiasis uh, is a parasite uh, that's present in, in infected water. Cryptospiridiosis uh, again is another parasite. Kuru, um, this is very similar to CJD. Uh, again it, it happens when people eat other people. You usually get this with uh, cannibals. Uh, there was a case in the 60s um, in New Guinea, 1964, where um, apparently part of the ritual was to, instead of burying the dead, they would eat their dead, especially the brain. And by eating the brain, they thought that that person's uh, soul would uh, still survive. Uh, but what was happening, it did bring um, into the fork the Kuru disease, uh, which is a lot like, as I mentioned, CJD. Uh, it affects the brain and it causes um, oh, untold damage um, and eventually death. Uh, other parasites include Tinea saginata, we find a lot in beef. Uh, Trichinella spiralis, very common in pork, or used to be very common in pork, so never eat undercooked pork. You can eat things like undercooked uh, steaks, beef steaks. Uh, you can eat undercooked game um, and lamb steaks, as long as it comes from a single joint or a single muscle. Uh, if it's minced or cut in, uh, in any form, then you must cook it well to at least 63 to 75 degrees C. Unfortunately, Trichinella spiralis is, um, you'll find it in pork, you'll find it in bear meat, uh, you'll also find it uh, in horse meat. And it, if you undercook the steak where it's uh, present, uh, you can come down with this infection, which can actually cause heart attacks and death. Uh, another one is fasciola hepatica. Again, that's something that would affect the uh, uh, liver. Uh, Echinococcus granulosus. So let's have a look at the comparison between food poisoning and foodborne disease. Uh, again, it's uh, something worth uh, studying because questions are quite likely to come up on the difference between the two. So first of all, with food poisoning, millions of bacteria are required. With foodborne disease, small numbers only. Um, even just one uh, bacterial cell or one viral particle. Bacteria multiply in food. Food is only a vehicle for foodborne disease, so it doesn't actually multiply in food. Vehicles other than food are unlikely with food poisoning, but other vehicles are common with foodborne disease. Person to person is rare with food poisoning, but person to person is common with foodborne disease. Airborne is unlikely with food poisoning, but airborne is very common with foodborne disease. There's a short onset with food poisoning, um, anything from one hour to several hours. And as we went through the foodborne disease, you could see there was a longer onset, up to, with hepatitis A, for example, up to 50 days. 
So the key points of that section, uh, only a small number of organisms are required to cause a problem with foodborne disease from one particle up to several. Multiplication in food is not essential, and in fact it doesn't. Uh, foodborne disease do not multiply in food. Airborne and person-to-person -person spread is common, especially if you think of norovirus or somebody coughs or sneezes. Uh, that cough or sneeze can spread for up to 50 metres. Uh, pets, farm animals and birds are a common source of foodborne disease organisms. And Campylobacter is the most common cause of diarrhoea in the UK. Again, be especially careful with packaged poultry, chickens. Um, the bacteria is not just present uh, within, or sorry, on the chicken skin and within the cavity, but also on the outside of the packaging. Listeria can multiply significantly in a refrigerator because it grows from minus 1.5 degrees C. And the penitent report recommendations, that's something uh, that we didn't cover, but the penitent report... Uh, came into being uh, several years ago uh, when food poisoning um, occurred uh, in Wishaw in Scotland where 22 people died, mainly elderly people, from E. coli 0157. It was all due to infection or cross-contamination between raw meat and cooked meat. And the Pennington, um, he put together recommendations to prevent any further outbreaks. Um, you're not likely to get a question on that, but the recommendations were to um, have licensed butchers, for example, uh, to have uh, better standards of food hygiene, uh, to um, implement HACCP when necessary. For further information on the Pennington Report, check out the notes that come with this course, and it'll give further details of what the recommendations were at that time.